This is my woods. And this is my woodland in a geometric glass container that has its own mini ecosystem. It's a bioactive mini forest and it sits just here on my desk so that I can look at it every day. This is the story of how I brought a little part of my woodland home with me. In November 2021, I finally achieved one of my lifelong dreams of buying my own woodland. It's a couple of acres of semi-ancient woodland in England, with a mixture of mature oak and ash trees and some hazel and holly spread throughout. It's springtime and the forest is starting to wake up from its winter dormancy. Over the past year, I have taken an interest in a fairly strange hobby, terrariums. A terrarium is essentially a glass container that usually contains soil and plants. The incredible thing about terrariums is that once you have made one, they need very little maintenance in the future. There are generally two types of terrarium, an open terraria, where there is always a gap in the glass for air to flow, and a closed terraria, where the glass is sealed shut with a lid or a door. I enjoy making closed terraria, as these are more suited to tropical plants as well as mosses. Essentially, the glass has a greenhouse effect. It allows light to pass in so that the plants can photosynthesize. It also captures heat. This heat allows moisture in the terrarium to evaporate. But as it has nowhere to go, it condensates on the inside of the glass. Eventually, the water flows back down the glass and into the soil, keeping a constant flow of the water to the plants and mosses. It's basically a miniature water cycle that creates its very own ecosystem within a glass container. I've been experimenting with different mosses, plants and glass biospheres over the past few months. And it suddenly dawned on me, what if I went into my woods, collected some moss and other plants and brought it back home with me and kept it alive in a glass container? And so this is where the story begins. There is plenty of moss around most woodlands especially those with a dense canopy cover, which can throw shade on the forest floor. This old decomposing log is covered in thick moss. It was a luscious green and instantly caught my eye. So I harvested a small patch by gently prizing it away with my fingers. It's important to note that moss doesn't have a root system. It spreads via rhizodes under the ground. These are the structures which help anchor moss to the surface of the ground. I never take a whole area of moss, just small patches, so that it can regrow over the gap that was created. I put the moss in a sealed clear plastic container, which will help keep the moisture inside. I wanted to collect moss from different areas of the woods to see how it would grow. Here's some more growing up a large oak tree which caught my eye. It peeled off pretty easily, but I noticed it had much less moisture in it than the moss on the tree stump. It was the beginning of spring, and I noticed the small fronds of the ferns beginning to unfurl. I really like the look of ferns, but I know that they are relatively tricky to propagate. It's not done traditionally like you would take a cutting from the tip of a plant. However, I did wonder how long I might be able to keep a fern cutting alive inside a terrarium. And so I pinched off a few tips of some of the ferns and placed these inside the plastic container with the moss. I then added some water to the container so that the moss wouldn't dry out in the time that I would take it home. The final part was to collect some hardscape material. For this, I just picked up a few small stones. With all the materials collected, I took them home and began to prepare them for the terrarium. With regards to building a terrarium, I find it useful to quarantine any moss or plants before I put them straight inside a glass container. That way, I can be sure that I have removed any unwanted bugs and insects which might eat my plants. To quarantine moss, I filled two bowls with filtered water and dipped the moss in one of the containers, leaving it to submerge for a few hours. This allows time for any bugs and insects to float to the surface. Once the moss has soaked, I put it in a sieve and run this under a tap to remove any excess mud and small sticks. Although the moss grows perfectly fine in the wild with dirt and twigs, it is not sealed inside a container, it has airflow whereas in the terrarium, it will be sealed in, and so the moisture will also build up inside. This could cause mold to build up on the decaying pieces of wooden twigs. And so I wanted to remove as much of this as possible. I fill a large clear plastic container with small stones. On top of this, I poured over some soil. Not ordinary soil though, 
This is a bonsai potting mix which is light, airy and has an open structure. A particle based, well structured soil allows water to drain quickly and fresh air to continually enter the soil. This is important for any moss or plants that are in a closed or open terrarium. I gave the soil a coating of water from a plant mister. I don't want to overwater it, but I make it damp enough so that it still feels spongy to the touch. I finished off by dunking the moss back into a clean bowl of water to allow it to absorb the water and remain moist. Finally, I put the moss over the soil layer and then placed the small fern cuttings upright in the moss. I know that these will die back as they have no root system, but I was still interested to see how long they would last in the closed terrarium. I put the lid on the container and will now leave this moss in a bright room away from indirect sunlight for two weeks. Finally, I cleared off the stones in some fresh water and then poured boiling water over them to kill off any bacteria that might have been on them. Then I left them to air dry. Now it was time for the design of the terrarium. I've made a number of different terrariums before, ranging from small fish bowls like this one, which is six months old and still going strong, to this Wardian style mini greenhouse, which has cushion moss or Lorcobrium glaucum. The tropical plants inside this one are the two Fetonia nerve plants, Fetonia agrianura, part of the Acanthaceae family, a few Camaderea elegans or parlor palms, and a small Neophropolis fern. I also added a small aquarium bridge to break up the look of the design and contrast against the moss. But the vessel I will be using for my woodland design is a glass geometric terrarium which has a hinged door. The door will allow me to let out any excess moisture within the terrarium if it condensates too much. It also helps prevent me from overwatering it and creating a buildup of mould. I like the fact that it's not symmetrical, so it will look totally unique from different angles. Here is the moss after two weeks quarantine in the plastic box. It is still moist and has maintained that vibrant green colour. The ferns are also still showing signs of life, which I'm pleased with. Although these ferns will die back eventually, it will be interesting to see how long they will last inside the terrarium. For the substrate, I use equal parts of vermicast, coir and small lava rock. Coir is the fibrous husks of the inner shell of a coconut. It helps maintain structure within the substrate and improve drainage. As I'm not making a drainage layer in this terrarium, the coir will help to maintain this drainage. It also helps with moisture retention. However, it doesn't have much in the way of nutrients and so this is where the vermicast comes in. The vermicast is the end product that has been created by earthworms as they break down organic matter. It is high in nutrients and is used as a natural fertilizer. This will help the moss and plants stay vibrant. The lava rocks are very porous. They have tiny little holes in them. These act in two ways. They allow excess water to pass through them and improve drainage, whilst also allowing water to sit in the small holes and help maintain moisture in the substrate. I mix these all together and this is my substrate mix. For this design, I want it to run vertically up the back of the terrarium, and so I lie down the glass container and give it a light spray with a plant mister. This will help the soil to stick to the glass once it gets slightly compressed. I then added the substrate with a spoon, building up at the base and the back of the glass container first, and then working my way up towards the top. I kept it moist halfway through so that the substrate would stick in layers. I use a few tools that help me when building terrariums. These are commonly found in aquatic stores. I have two long pairs of aquatic tweezers, one straight and one with a bend. In addition, I use a sand scraper to level the substrate and a pair of long aquatic scissors to trim any plants that are growing too large for the terrarium. I'll leave a link to everything I used in this video in the description box below. Once the substrate was evened out, it was time to add the moss. Rather than add it all in one go, it's easier to take small chunks of moss and place these into position. It gives me a greater chance of compressing the moss against the substrate and glass, and also lets me tweak and change position so that it looks right. I started at the top of the glass and then worked my way down towards the base. On the left hand side of the glass, I added a different species of moss to give the design more contrast. With the ferns, I simply held them in with the tweezers and push the stem through the moss and into the substrate. Remember these will die back, but for now I want to use them as a test to see how long they will last. I then gave everything another light misting to help compress it down. Now was the delicate part. 
I gently lifted up the terrarium back to vertical position. Then I did one final misting of both moss and the sides of the glass. By misting the sides of the glass, the water runs straight down to the substrate to keep it moist, as opposed to the moisture just sitting on the top of the moss and not getting the substrate damp. But now the glass is all fogged up with water droplets and I can't see the design inside. So I fold over a small piece of kitchen towel and using the long tweezers to gently rub away the water droplets on the inside of the glass, being careful not to disturb the moss too much. I find this part really satisfying. As I wipe away the fog, I can see the bright detailed colors inside the terrarium beginning to emerge. It's almost like a miniature rainforest. I find using the angled tweezers works better with this, especially in this type of terrarium design where the glass is at different angles that would make it awkward for the straight tweezers to get around the corners. I do the same to all the visible corners of the glass that I can get to. As for the substrate at the top and the back of the glass, I can't wipe this away, but it will evaporate again. If I opened up the door for a day, it will clear out. The terrarium is almost complete. I love the bright vivid green of the moss on the back of the glass. It helps give a sense of depth of field to the design. Next up was to add the hardscape material. Remember the stones that I collected from the woods? Well, I cleaned them up with filtered water. I didn't use soap as I didn't want any chemicals to leach into the substrate. I used the tweezers to gently place the stones where I wanted them. Generally, I place the larger stones near the back and the smaller ones at the front or on the top. This helps give more depth and detail to the terrarium. Now I miss the stones ready for the next and final stage, which is the cleanup crew. As these items I have collected from my woodland have not been totally cleaned or grown in a lab, there is always the chance of bacteria and mould building up, especially in a closed terrarium where the moisture doesn't have a chance to escape. And so, to help prevent the build-up of mould, I introduce springtails into the terrarium. Part of building a functional bioactive ecosystem in a terrarium is trying to replicate the natural processes and cycles that keep woodlands functioning the way they do. Springtails are free-living anthropods that help to fragment biological material present in the soil and leaf litter, supporting decomposition. They are a detrivore, and so they feed on dead organic matter. As the ferns begin to die back, the springtails will feed on them. Here is a culture of springtails that I have had in a small container. I use a spoon to gently drop them into the terrarium. I also sprinkle the substrate that they are on over the stones to give them more of a worn look and break up the colours. The springtails will work their way around the terrarium. They can live happily in a closed terrarium and they have an amazing ability to self-regulate their population. If there is plenty of decaying matter in the terrarium, they will grow in size and numbers. If there isn't much decaying matter and the temperatures rise high enough, they will reduce their body size up to 30% by molting and their population will decrease. Once I close the door on the glass, the water cycle will begin. The water within the substrate and moss will heat up and evaporate. It will then turn into water vapour, which will condensate on the inside of the glass. This will then run back down the glass and rewater the moss and plants, creating a mini bioactive ecosystem. As I rotate the terrarium, you can see how much moisture is in the substrate. If water condensates too much on the glass over the next few days, I can leave the door open for a day or so to allow excess moisture to leave. The springtails won't jump out, as they like the warm temperature and moisture of the terrarium. The great thing about this is that I can add new plants to it as and when I want. Down the line, I think I'll add some English ivy cuttings from my woodland and have them growing down the back of the terrarium, but I might also add a tropical plant or two for a bit of colour. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you gained some inspiration for it. It might have you looking at empty glass containers in a different way now. Even an empty jam jar with some cling film on the top can act as a closed terrarium. It's a great hobby of mine and one I'm really passionate about. If you're into things like this or just anything outdoors related, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll link to the Woodland series playlist in the video description below. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.